Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ian MacDonald. I'm a reader in film practice at Film and Culture Lab in Newcastle University um, and I'm also the degree programme director for our two undergraduate programmes, the BA Film Practices and the BA Film and Media. Um, and I'm really happy to introduce two of our students um, to, to, to talk to us today about Black Lives Matter um, about racism and about filmmaking, especially documentary filmmaking. Um, uh, so briefly, just to introduce them, but they can also say a little bit about themselves. Um, we have Dami Fawi Himmi, uh, who is a second year student, a second year combined honours student. So she is doing the film and meet the documentary practice part of the film and media strand plus other subjects. And we have Warren Brown Headley, who is a, a, also a sec, sorry, first year student. Warren's a first year student, um, uh, BA Film Practices program. Um, so it's great to, to welcome you, Dami and Warren, to, to, to this, and, and really happy you're, you're, you're kind of up for discussing uh, what has become, you know, probably the most important issue uh, that, that's really affecting us today um, and you know and this, this has obviously a, a long long history and a long um, legacy um, which we can talk about but I guess its immediate um, roots are in actually you could say in, in COVID in some ways that it's the, the whole kind of situation that's occurred with the, with the coronavirus disease which has this disproportionately affected black and ethnic minorities um, and that's caused a lot of tension and, and raised a lot of questions and then on the back of that of course we had the, the brutal murder of George Floyd um, in when was it May 25th uh, in, in, in the US which sparked you know this 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 uh, first of all within the states but then internationally this kind of movement this this rising up of anger uh, and in the, uh, uh, amongst not just the black community, but uh, amongst the black and, and white community. And that's kind of obviously, you know, and we're living through that at the moment. And that's provoked all sorts of debates and arguments about the nature of, of racism, um, about the experience of, um, within our black community and about how we go forward um, in, in, uh, in our response to this. And I know that both of you have been very, very much involved in discussions, in debates, in, in organizations, um, seeking to move things forward, um, and that, which is fantastic. And, but today, the discussion, I thought it would be really good if we could focus it around, you know, a number of things really, around uh, what the Black Lives Matter movement means to you, um, how it's changed things from your perspective, uh, and then let's relate that to film and the whole process of filmmaking and of studying film um, at, at the university. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have time also to think about the future for you as, as, uh, as students, but also what, what we think, what we would like to see as emerging out of or as a response to um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. So maybe we just start by, you know, Dami and Warren, if you just want to just say a little bit about yourselves, introduce yourself. Um, we should say that Dami's having some problems with her video. So we just have a rather wonderful still of her staring down at us. <laughs> but but sh she's very much there. So maybe just introduce yourselves just a little bit and then we can start the, the conversation proper. So Dami, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, so I am a combined honours student and I'm in second year. Um, I'm part of societies like um, ACS, LGBT, um, I signed up to film sock as well. Just things, anything that kind of allows me to connect with creativity and helping, you know, um, societies and groups kind of become more diverse if they kind of forget that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, in regards to Black Lives Matter and things like that, it's been quite a, because it's always something that we experienced from like the first day of our lives. So when you see the world kind of waking up to it, you're kind of just like, okay, more people need to get on this and you need to make sure that the institutions that you're a part of are also getting on with this. Because I think my biggest thing is that 
even looking at it from like a financial point of view, you have students coming in from all over the world and, you know, leaving their homes, you want to make sure that they're in safe environments. And I think when you're the only black woman in the room or there's another black person in the room with you, but everyone else looks the same, you kind of feel a bit disjointed. So it's really important to make sure that those students feel connected, even though they may be the minority in the situation. And you know, taking on accountability in these institutions as well is important because things aren't going to get better if no one changes stuff from the very bottom to go to the very top. Um, but yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is definitely talking about the change and then actually making the change come true. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank, thanks, Dami. And we'll certainly come back to that about the whole question of, you know, the impact and, and how we change things. But first, uh, Warren, do you want to introduce yourself and say a little bit about you, yourself? Yeah, no problem. Um, my name's Warren. I, um, I'm a first year student. Um, I do uh, BA film practice, film practices, and um, I'm I'm the I'm the secretary for Stand Up to Racism um, at the university. Um, and yeah, our, our, I guess our our aims are just to um, my aim as well as our aim is just to to have a campus, have a more inclusive, have a more diverse, have a more representative um, campus in general. Um, and as uh, Dami was saying, um, to empower the, the uh, to, to work with the Black Lives Matter movement so that we can see the changes um, actually come to fruition um, that, that, we want, that we want to see and, and making those changes um, concrete and, and very clear for people for for people to to understand so that's um mm. sure. great okay good i'm interested to know um your interest in, in in i know we're talking about black lives matter but we're also talking about how you know we're talking about the programs that you're on as students uh i'm so i'm just interested to know kind of what your you know in, how did you get interested in film what were your influences your favorite films your favorite filmmakers you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, so, yeah, my my um, interest in anything visual kind of started when I was much younger because um, I'm a photographer, so I was always obsessed with kind of still art, first of all. Um, and then when I was... Um, because my dad, he's, like, absolutely obsessed with films that would kind of be our thing. So as I got older and I could start picking what subjects I wanted to do in secondary and sixth form, um, being able to create short visual videos so um kind of like music videos but because back then it was very much you just needed to do a project at school and it was quite small but um then once I uh towards the end of sixth form I was able to do more creative projects and then once I got to uni I was like okay I definitely want to study this and do it practically mm. um but some of my biggest inspirations I think um was Shonda Rhimes and Issa Rae so Shonda Rhimes actually created Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder. And it's like, you're able to see yourself on the screen and relate to some of these characters, especially for, for black women. And Issa Rae created Insecure, which is extremely relatable because it talks about the young black women's experience. So having shows and films by these creators it's very much like there's a narrative to be told and that's what inspired me to to study film because it was like I didn't when it comes to the actual practicality of it of filming that's funnily enough not my strong suit it's more like directing and um, visualizing it into coming to the concept but I'm still obsessed with filmmaking and studying the course and things like that um, but what inspires me to keep going is just knowing that even though there are so many black creators, we're not able to see them because mainstream media, Hollywood, they're not promoting it as much. So it's very much continuously trying to create as much content as I can that talks mm. about the black experience. Um, and also, you know, hoping that anywhere I go, it's kind of like, can we talk, can we include these black directors? Cause they've existed from the beginning of time, you know? Um, See, so yeah, that's it, that's for me, yeah. Okay, great. That's interesting. And what about for you, Warren? What What is your, how did you get into film and what are your, your influences and your inspirations? Um, my, I mainly got into film. I wasn't uh, like always as 
like a creative person um most of my friends if like they would have just said oh yeah i would have done sciences like i did sciences at a level um and history um but throughout i used to have like a a basketball youtube channel and um we'd go around me me and my friend we we ran the channel together we'd um like go to we'd film our games and like make highlights of the games um we had like a series called 5 a.m basketball where like we'd have to wake up at like 4 30 so that we could go and play basketball because there were no basketball courts around um and then i just started really enjoying like making them and then eventually just making the videos because it was some because i'd never had like a creative thing to do um and then and then i made the first documentary i ever made was um, it was on like this team called Brent Ballers. Um, and I watched it and it's terrible. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Um, mm. and then, and then I, and then I, we kept going with the nothing but net channel and it, it was starting to pick up like some speed, but mm. then, um, I had GCSEs, but then we released a documentary on there called work, which has like, which it, it does it's not much. It's like 4,000 views or something. But for, for at the time, it was on. It was on Andrew, the guy who played basketball. But at the time, I was like, "Oh, that is so. That was crazy." Um, and then from there, I just, I just, it was just enjoyable to think of something in my head, film it, and then come to the editing room and make it a, a real thing, and then other people seeing it. Um, so that's that was. And then just seeing other filmmakers. It was mostly. It was mostly on like on YouTube really because there were some the early filmmakers the VFX artists on there mm. were like big inspiration for me mm. um to like yeah that that was those were my main inspiration I, I never I never watched I was never that the kind of person to just like sit down and just watch films like all the time I'd watch you films of other YouTubers which now I, I look at them and they're like it's not that good mm. but it was that inspiration of like it's do it like that do it yourself kind of um mm. creativity like just put it together and and yeah. just make just make things and think about th and then think about how you make them how you can make them better and yeah mm. it's I, interesting I, it's 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 i mean f f i think both of your responses kind of reflects um both probably the, how most students will be the motive, you know, the motivation for most students has been reflected in what you've said, but also the experiences, the specific experiences of race and racism, I think also come through, you know, um, particularly, you know, when, when Dami talks about it being a, a means of creative expression, but the form and the, and the preoccupation of that creative expression then becomes around representation because of the obvious lack of representation of particularly black women in the creative field. So it, you know, it, it, it kind of it enters into, the, the, the um, these choices as well, doesn't it? And I think we we Warren and I kind of picked up the idea. Yeah, I mean it's like that buzz of connecting with people. <laughs> Film becomes a very effective way of of you know obviously YouTube is the main way of 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 kind of making that instant connection with 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 people and and therefore as a tool of of communication, it's very very powerful. Um, so yeah, I mean that. But when you when you were then thinking about coming to university um, and specifically coming to do a film program. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you looked anywhere else, seriously consider going anywhere else, but obviously Newcastle was, was um, featured and, and was ultimately the choice that you made. Did it come into your mind at all about um, what it might be like? I mean, I don't know the, the, the kind of demographics of where you live and where you, where you were brought up, but did it occur to you that, you know, you would be, um, one of the very few black students on this program was that a factor that entered into your mind and and or, or not? I don't know who wants to take that first. Just jump in, whoever wants to. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So I grew up in southeast London, which when I was there in primary school was majority black people, um, and then I moved to Essex when I was about seven, and I was about maybe three out of a thousand black oh so i was three black kids one of three black kids out of a thousand students so it was a massive shift for me to be like suddenly you know everything about you is celebrated and then you have people telling you to change 
things as you are from a very young age that you can't really control but now today we know that as racism i'm older so i know it was a racist experience but it was very much um as i got older i wanted to surround myself with as much as my culture and my heritage as i can because you know when my area is a lot more diverse today than it was um about 10 or over 10 years ago since i've lived here um but it's it's still very much like you can you can go into the town and you can find the food that your culture serves and you can see other black people all the time but i knew moving up north was something that people close to me was a bit worried and nervous about because it's very much you know you're gonna probably not see any black people and how are you going to connect to things like that so what kind of definitely made me feel safe was I was actually supposed to come to Newcastle University in 2017 but I missed by one grade so I had to do a, a BTEC photography course to get back in um, and in that year before I'd made friends that were a year ahead of me um, so they would tell me how good the ACS community is and how that kind of feels like a home away from home. So even though Newcastle isn't as diverse as your home in London or Essex may be, you can be connected around these people. So for me, that was very much like, okay, I'm definitely gonna go forward with this. I love the course. I'm gonna find my people. We'll just work around that. Um, but I was quite surprised, if I'm honest, when I got to Newcastle for the open day. And it is for the North, it's still, you know, not as, you know diverse because it's the north them, but yeah, yeah. when i was out and about in the city i did see quite a few black people mm. um so for me that was very much like i was quite a metropolitan area um so everything would be kind of fine i guess um but yeah when i got into my actual course um it was like i was the <laughs> only black person there i think and then because i studied two other courses and combined honors it was like you could as soon as you walk in you could just see where the black people is that's how much we stuck out so it was quite daunting at first before I made friends with my, my, my black friends in my media car, class because it was very much you know it, it's kind of going back to my first day at school when I moved to Essex to that whole you're kind of the min minority again and even more at this point um but yeah as I've been there for about two years now it's very much you just find your people and you start to feel way more comfortable but that doesn't mean that experiences racial experiences still haven't happened to me while I was at the uni and um there's still quite a bit to be done in that regard okay yeah. hopefully we'll come back onto that uh Dami, if you would be good to talk about that a bit more um but what's what was your your take Warren what was your kind of sense of it all before you came here um it was it was mainly like for me, I, I I came on like, I came on clearance, so I wasn't even I wasn't even I, I was like okay, what is the best place for me to do film? I was like okay, for me to be to for me to feel I don't know, feel like it was the best place just to do film. Like the the consideration I knew it was going to be all white. I knew it was going to be. But um, like I've, I don't know. There, there's in, in my in my life, like I've just been around white people all the time, um, and ra had racist incidents just like all the like just all the time, like just countless. I'm sure um, Dami has as well. Like it's just just countless, countless um, things. And I, I think at at some point I got. Um, I guess I'm not sure that's how you use the word. Just inoculated against it. I was just like, okay, this is going to continue to happen, and I'm going to need to um, put myself in a position whereby I can try and make some form of change in the future. Um, and that's why well, I joined Stance Racism eventually. Um, but I, I just. It, w it was just more to me it was just more about like okay this is this the situation that we're currently in is terrible and i was just like okay this, this is just going to continue to happen it's going to continue to happen and the only thing that i can do is just be a be a part of the change that, that's mm. like that's, mm. that was just how i was thinking about it yeah 
And I just wanted to ask before sort of looking into in more depth at some of these experiences, just about documentary filmmaking, because we've been talking generally about film. Um, but was there, is there something about documentary filmmaking that, that appeals to you or, or, the, or was it just the idea of filmmaking? Um, Dami, do you, because you came in on combined honours, so yeah, I'd be interested to know. Yeah. Much, because you would have chosen your, these modules only once you've arrived, right? Or, yeah. or unless you came with a with clear understanding that you wanted to do film. And to, yes. Yeah, I've about. chosen my modules before I came in. Um, but the thing I loved most about it was that it just seemed there was a lot of... Obviously, it was still being taught because that's, that's the whole point of it. But it seemed like there was a lot of... Um, maybe control that we could be given so it'd be made very much like you have to film about this but the topic can be wherever you want and that's something I really loved about it um so it just gave me the outlet to be like okay I'm going to talk about this or because one of my friends he's a drag queen so we did a docu a little short documentary um towards the end of year one um and it was basically like a day in the life of a, a drag queen and stuff like that is just you know um creating narratives that people don't see because he's a black drag queen and that's not very popular in um, the LGBT community. So it's very much like, I want to create narratives for everybody because everyone's story deserves to be told. Um, but yeah, that's, that's very much what drag, um, pulled me towards studying documentary was that freedom of it, yeah. Then Dami, I, as, a, as a, one of the lecturers, I have a bone to pick with you then. Why didn't you choose to do film? Why combined honours? You, we should, you should be doing more film, right? <laughs> um, you should be on it, our course properly, not as a combined honours student. Sorry to combined honours, but you know. <laughs> no, no, it was, um, I think it was, be oh yeah, because I don't know if, I might be completely wrong when I say this, please correct me if I am, but mm -hmm. I don't know, can film students who just do film, can they do a placement year or a year abroad kind of thing? Because I want to do a placement year. Yeah, actually all university students have, are entitled to do a year placement abroad or oh. whatever. They all, all are entitled, no, I'm not sure it's abroad, but they're, they're all, you're all entitled to take a year out. Oh, uh, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Cause that's the reason why I chose combined honors cause it let me do that placement year. So right, right, if yeah. I'd known that, then I probably would have, but um, because our I do loss, business loss, with yeah. it. Yeah. We should, we should get our communication sharper, obviously, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, but because I studied media and business, it was very much like right. getting, my love for film, my love for media, my love for business and just roll with it. But I actually had no idea that any course could do that. Yeah, you can, but it sounds like a good package of, of stuff that you're doing there anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. Um, um, yeah, so Warren, what, documentary, Was it? Is it documentary that, that, that your passion is there or, or is it fiction? Uh, documentary more than fiction, definitely. Fiction, fiction, can be uh it can be i think it can be fun um in the sense that you can exaggerate some parts of reality and put them kind of at the forefront whereas you'd have to it would be it would be a lot harder to tease it out within documentary um to to kind of emphasize it and dr like dramatize it mm -hmm. um which really puts it at the forefront but documentary was more about connecting with people. Um, and uh, I, because I, one of the passions was, the reason why I started to have a passion for it was um, one of my, me and one of my friends made a documentary called No Comment. We, we went to um, the, was it, it was UK SCM protests and like Extinction Rebellion protests and filmed the documentary of um, one of the protests. We just followed, we just followed him throughout the day um and then they're like scenes of us like on london bridge they're like they closed down the entirety of london bridge mm. and they were marching like um from parliament square all the way around they were just closing stuff off um and then the guy got arrested at the end of it we did we just had no clue and he just got arrested we're like, oh what it was, cra it, was, it was crazy and it was just it was just such like a it was quite a surreal experience it was, because it wasn't it just wasn't something that happened did you just see london bridge just empty this is one of the, and we're just like, whoa. And just thinking about just having experiences like that. And um, with the, U, we, the UCU documentary that we were, that we are still going to be filming. Um, just 
You just want to explain that because people won't know what that is, the UCU documentary. Oh, yeah. um, we are uh, some, me, um, this, uh, another student called Joe and Finn, um, we're filming a documentary on the UCU strikes um, that just, that recently happened. Um, and through that, we kind of connected in with the lecturer community, which isn't something that, I don't know, that I, th I think most students, not most students, but why, well, yeah, that most students do very much. Um, and it was just, it was really fun, it was really insightful, it was, uh, it was really interesting. And it was just, uh, it was nice to, to connect with people and see their views of the world and understand them. And yeah, it was, and that's why I like doing documentary mainly to get, you get the stories that just, uh, as Damien was saying, get the stories of people and groups of people um, as well, movements of people um, and put them out there so people um, understand them, definitely. So th that just leads me to, to ask, do you, do you think that your experiences, um, um, particularly as, 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 you know, as black people gives you a particular orientation to, 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 the, to the kinds of films that you might want to do or a kind of insight access um, that 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 um, might be not even come on the radar of somebody who isn't black or had, who hasn't had those experiences. I mean, there is a kind of um, this question is leading to another question about you know kind of whether there are stories that are not being told, whether there are groups or communities that we don't hear about, partly because the documentary filmmaking community in this country, by and large, you know, it's still very white. Mm. Um, it's, it's difficult to think of, w there are hundreds and hundreds of black documentary filmmakers in this country. Yeah. You were one of them, right? Both <laughs> of you are doing it. But if you try and think of high profile, established uh, black documentary filmmakers in this country, it's very difficult to come up with names, you know, or there, there, there are individuals um, and, you know, people like John O'Confer, of course, are very, very well known. Um, and, and and others but some often working in the gallery space which is quite interesting but do you know what i mean i'm, I'm talking about kind of um you know the, the the nick broomfields or the louis theroux you know where are those kind of black people so my question then there was a two part of the first part was about that experience of you know of of being black and the kind of experiences you have and the insights that gives you whether that leads to certain kind of stories that otherwise would not be told hmm. Do you think that's a fair statement you know, or, or not? Dami, do you, sorry, I have to keep asking Dami because we can't see her whether she oh, you know, as, yeah. you know, wants to respond, so. Um, Warren, I don't mind if you, if you take this one. I just want to think about my answer for a second. Yeah, okay. yeah no problem. Um, I, I would, I'd say, yeah, um, in the sense that it's a different uh, perception of society because you understand, because you, because we we understand um, the history of our skin and how that has led us to be viewed within society, the view that we in turn have of society is is shifted. Um, it's it cannot fundamentally it can't be the same as a white person, as a um, uh, and somebody from Asia or wh wherever. It's fundamentally can't be the same. They're, they're all different views. So I would definitely say that it gives, it It might, um, yeah, I guess it, it would, it means that we, I'll speak, I'll speak for myself, um, lit, want to bring up the voices of oppressed peoples in general, um, a tendency towards that because of that view of society because of our complete, yeah, the separate view of it. Yeah, there is a sense in which every film that we do, any film that document is a reflection of them, themselves in some way, even though we might not feel it's about us. Actually, it is in some way, there's always a reflection of self um, in, in that. So, yeah, I don't know if you've got a, a response to that, Dami. Um, yeah, no, I completely agree. Each person's story and how they're going to tell it is going to be completely different and that deserves to be you know respected and pushed up and things like that for me it was um 
I when I started to get into like understanding documentaries or people would be the people that is on the screen would be like Stacey Dooley, um, Reggie Yates kind of thing, um, Louis Thoreau kind of things. And as I got older, I started to wonder where, why aren't there more black people on the screen? And you'd have to find them like BBC Three. I remember they used to have so many diverse documentary filmmakers. Um, but then after they removed it from uh, TV and you could only access it on online, it was it was very much like all the stories that minority groups had to say weren't as important because if you were going to make a, a giant documentary, it would be on BBC One. Um, so then people would kind of turn to Channel 4 and I was actually mentored at Channel 4 and um, they'd take in a lot of um, black filmmakers who you know didn't really know which way they wanted to go and learn more and it was, it was really nice to kind of see these platforms sharing different stories but today it's like I know a lot more um, black documentary makers but it's still very much down to mainstream media not giving them a platform that they deserve because it's almost just like um this one that I watched on how black women are more likely to die during childbirth and it was so interesting and it was ed so educational but you know you don't see it on tv you only can only watch it online and it's very much like it needs to be more accessible and you can not so much as um a word of saying you need to force people to watch this but if you have uh, like a country like Britain that's majority white and a large portion of people are watching um, shows on BBC kind of thing you need to put it where they're going to find it because a lot of people can't they won't you know they won't take the time to educate themselves which is completely their responsibility but on the other flip side of that we also need to make sure that these institutions are doing as much as they can to put that educational media out there so it's definitely the responsibility of BBC to be like, why are we only producing white um, documentaries? Why are we only showing a white narrative? You know, you need to go and find these documentary filmmakers that do exist and always have and kind of be like, hey, here's a documentary about black women in childbirth that you need to learn about because this is institutionalized medical racism. Put it on the thing, put it on prime time and kind of create this whole, the narrative is important, the narrative needs to be shared. Um, which is definitely something I agree with, yeah. So in terms, let's bring up some more to, the, to your current experiences though. I mean, can you, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement is, um, you know, on, on a scale that probably, you know, we haven't seen probably since the late 60s, even, even the riots in the, in the early 80s were of a particular expression um, of, of discontent. This, this is global and this is in some sense multiracial as well and, and, it, it, and you know you do get the sense that it's kind of affected everything um, and it's a conversation now that people are, ha are having. Can you just talk about your experiences as black students at, you know, at Newcastle University studying documentary sort of before the, the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of how things have now, you feel things have shifted with the Black Lives Matter movement. So I'm kind of interested in, you know, in, in how, it, how it was, you know, what it felt like um, for you and what some of your experiences as a black students before, um, you know, uh, the, the events of, of May really. Do you want to, um, again, I don't know if Dami wants to take that first or you want to ask a little, or Warren wants to jump in first? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I, um, I guess before, before the Black Lives Matter movement, it was, uh, it was more about, um, it, it wasn't, race wasn't something that was, was really discussed pro properly in the sense that nobody, Apart from silence to race, and we had we had a few few rallies, but there was there's still what twenty? How many people at Newcastle University? There's like twenty five thousand or something. Yeah, yeah. twenty five that twenty five thousand people, and we've got we got forty people to a rally, which is we're really appreciative of that, obviously. But there's obviously um, a ways to go. Um, there's so many people on campus who race must not even be a one well, well for the ethnic minorities on campus 
say it's can't, it has to be. They don't have the choice for it not to be a thought in their mind. But for um, all of those other thousands of people, it's not, it's not big enough to do something about. Um, and I think Black Lives Matter is the start to changing that, to make it omnipresent in the minds of, of people across campus. Um, that this is a uh, th that this is a serious um, historical, economic, everything problem, um, an all-encompassing problem um, that you have been shielded against, um, and it's very important that mm. that people start that start to take action. And Black Lives Matter has has mm. um, emboldened people to start taking that action. I mean, I'm I'm if I was to make a documentary. Uh, on you too, for example. I, I know I would want, you know, say, pose this question I just asked you as a, as a kind of a documentary. I'd kind of want to know a bit about, you know, what it felt like to be Dami and Warren, you know, as students looking around and what were some of the feelings that you had and what were the, some of the ways in which you felt that racism was, was being expressed towards you? Um, both, and I'm, you know, because often, people think that racism is is takes the form of like we saw with George Floyd or you know of Nazis on the street but it's that kind of overt name calling or violence against the black body but there are you know we know that it's more complex and more varied uh, and more ubiquitous in some ways than that so I don't know if you can I, I'm kind of interested in, in that as a documentary filmmaker now I want you know I we know the grand narrative but I want the human story <laughs> so you know tell me the, because I, you know what, in, what it felt like to you emotionally physically as a, um, as a, I think for me it was in first year I remember um I was actually one of my mates we were I think we were at the time the only two black people there and there was a bit of an incident where I remember they put on a documentary which had lynching in it and for me that was quite upsetting so I had to leave and it was very much like for the rest of the the rest of the year went pretty smoothly but it was kind of disheartening to not see any other represent, representation of the black narrative other than that so it was like all the films that we'd watched were by white documentary filmmakers and you know the only kind of representation I would find is if you know I, I made the film myself and then you know when we'd have to show the films in class every week um so when I got to year two and there was a bit more control over what you could make I was hoping that there would be more um of that narrative but there, there wasn't really so for me it was just mostly hoping that you know because it's, it's all about who's like everyone's story deserves to be told kind of thing. And for me, it was that I definitely wanted to see when we'd be watching, because I remember we'd, class would be split up into two classes. So you'd have one where there was the lecture and you'd watch a film. And then the second one was more practical and you might watch a like a short 30 minute doc at the beginning. Um, but yeah, for me, it was it was very much like, why aren't we watching any films made by black people? And also why that documentary in first year was, was shown um, that yeah, for me that was quite an, a, a, a sad experience. I think yeah. How how did it make you feel though, Dami? Um, I just think because that that particular week in which it had happened was um, I, I had a lot going on that week. Um, so I think I remember I just remember leaving and just going home, and I was quite upset about it because okay. I was I was excited for the course, but to see that and there not be any like. Mm. trigger warning or anything like that it was I was quite taken aback um mm. and I remember just having to like be with my friends that day and kind of things but I didn't really I think mm. I, I'm, I'm confident enough to talk about it now but because of how hard it was for me to get back into the university after my course I was a bit fearful and talking about it because not that it happened around me or at the university but you've heard of students who speak up and then their grade is affected or they're kicked out and for me, that was the worry at the back of my mind. I was like, if I go and tell the lecturer that upset me, you know, would they mark me down? They wouldn't like me. So I didn't really feel confident in saying anything. Um, but I think having this conversation 
is helpful because I come back next year, next year, September. Um, so the goal would be hopefully for the new cohort, cohort that come, that they're able to see all kinds of stories. Um, yeah. Mm. So interesting. Uh, what, Warren, what about you? Um, to share something with us. I'd say, let me think. Um, I guess walking around town is something that's always quite interesting. That's always an experience. Um, because one thing that you, one thing that I think maybe Dami, you, you might be able to testify to this is that, uh, like the kind of just the stares you might get, yeah. um, because you're just, you're just walking around, um, doing whatever you might just be going to the shops and people are just staring at you. Like you're just some alien, alien being that's not supposed to be here. people. Genuinely, I've had just people just stare at me. People have come up to me um, and said, oh, um, well, about my hair. I, I let my hair grow out just, just a bit one time. Um, and then I was just in Tesco, just waiting. I was just waiting for one of my friends to be done at the checkout. Somebody comes up to me, he's like, can I touch your hair? Can I touch your hair? And then some, some guy is, is next to her. And then I'm sit, standing there and looking at my friend. I'm like, she looked, she was harmless. She wasn't like, it wasn't like a... The, like oh, girl, let me touch you. she and then she just like just started rambling about my hair and just kept talking to me oh your hair is so nice and it was just like it's just things things like that it's like can I just be left alone to just go about my day um and just and chill but it's just not something that happens so I'd say walking into town and then clubs as well clubs is always a funny thing because when you walk in you you, we, me and my friends call it black man points because for no reason, all your friends, my white friends, um, they, they'll just walk through the club. But for some reason, people think we're best mates because I'm black. I walk through the club. Oh, how you doing, man? You doing good? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. You heard about, um, Stormzy and Skip. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Calm. It's just... <laughs> It's just silliness. It's just silliness. Um, but yeah, that's like that's that's what I'd say. I mean, it's 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 never been, it's never really been malicious at Newcastle. It's never been like a malicious kind of oh, you're black, get out of here. Da, 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 da. It's more never been around black people, um, and just the stares and mm. and yeah, and like which is strange, out of character behaviour that people might. Mm. Um, exhibit. Um, it brings us on to, um, I mean, Dami's kind of started the, the discussion really in some ways. I, I just wanted to talk about one of the main kind of demands that's now coming out of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is around de uh, de decolonizing the, the curriculum and the institution. Um, so I guess my question is, and I guess, as I say, Dami has kind of started on it, but if we can del uh, elaborate on this, is what does that look like for our film degree, what does decolonizing the curriculum mean, do you think, for the film degree? And secondly, for the institution, for the university? Um, I definitely think it's a, it's a process, but it's definitely attainable and achievable. Um, so just listing off the everything. So kind of hiring um, black film teachers, um, ensuring that there's a diverse amount of media that you guys are showing in, in the classes. So um, especially having, um, see the thing about having conversations about race, you have to be very, you have to really know what you're doing, which is why I probably wouldn't advise it in such, because it can become a moment to be like, we are debating someone's existence versus talking about the importance of the black narrative. So if it was like, um, we put on a black film, we talk about it and be like, oh, they're talking about, um, I don't know, uh, uh, it could be anything. That's what's the beauty of it. It could be a black documentary about cars and the connection with cars and things like that. So it's very much important for the lecturers if they heard anything that came off as racist to ensure that the students are all educated on why what they said was wrong or ensuring that the conversation is educational, but also not an environment for them to 
debate race and be like, oh, this isn't important to talk about and stuff like that, you know, making sure that it is a safe space. Um, but I definitely think that, you know, and also having um, certain elements of the curriculum include uh, black books as well. Because I, um, gosh, it's been, it feels like it's been so long since I've been on campus, but you know, when we have to make references and write essays and that kind of things, the reading list, that was it, yeah. I remember the reading list would, if I can't, if I can remember, would never have any black um, writers and stuff like that. So I would have to find um, black documentary writers um, to kind of connect to theories I was making because that wasn't included in class. Um, so definitely ensuring that the reading list is diverse as well. Um, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, good, good point. I mean, what about you, Warren? What's your take on this, on de decolonizing the curriculum? And, and I mean, Dami didn't go on to it, but we can talk also about the institution as well. Maybe we can come back to you, Dami, and you can say what you think about decolonizing the institution. Yeah. What that looks like. Um, yeah, I think uh, in the classroom, um, I guess the the, doc, the documentary is just because while well, decolonizing, I'll, I'll start with the I'll start with the film program, and then I'll go to the institution. Because um, the with the film program, it would be it'd be more about. Um, I think I think generally it started to go in that direction especially with world cinema um, was definitely very good. People, people just enjoyed, I could tell people were actually enjoying um, a lot of the films on the program. Um, some of them weren't, they didn't, weren't as receptive to, but I think it's, it's a change from, from nothing. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, which is definitely a step in the right direction. Um, also, yeah, hiring black, um, film lecturers, but that's another problem. That's a problem with the institution, which I'll get onto. Um, and then it's 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 an understanding of of history, but mo mainly because that's that is that's the main that is the main main problem. And when we go to the institution, because when we ask we want if we want to decolonize education, there's so many things that um, have to be done because it's it's not just at this institutional level, it's at a wider institutional level um, as well as that. Um, like for example, why are there not as many black film lecturers? Because, may, because PhDs are expensive to do if you don't have the, um, if you don't have the capital, the, mo the money to, to, to pursue those degrees. And then that also goes back to education, uh, black people to being discriminated in the education sector. And, and then that just leads to a knock on effect throughout all institutional levels. So it's, a, it's definitely, as uh, Dami was saying, a multi, kind of like, it's a multi-layered problem. Um, but we, I, I think the film degree has gone in some way um, towards, towards understand, towards, towards decolonization um, and films like Mulade, especially, um, that, was my, that was my favorite film that we watched. Sam Benny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Top film. Yeah. Um, those kind of films, that is, that, that, the, that whole world cinema module would, is the start of a decolonized education system, mm. 100%. We, we, um, that's, I mean, it's, and it's, it, it's very deliberate that we put that in the first year and it's very deliberate that we put that in the first semester of the first year. And many people are shocked that on a documentary practice, documentary filmmaking course in your first year, on your first semester, you're watching, you know, films from around the world, fiction films from around, around the world. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, we're, we've got, a, we know we've got a long way to go, but there is a sense in which to be a good filmmaker is to is to is to have um, open your mind, open your perspective, to open yourself up to the world and what the world has got to offer, and to break that hegemony of a kind of a white uh, European American culture. Um, so, and um, we've done that not um, not as consciously as part of a decolonial, you know, decolonizing the agenda thing, 
but because I think that for us is an important part of being, a, you know, a, a good filmmaker. But, and I think it speaks to one of the things that you said that for me, one of the dangers of the decolonizing agenda is that it becomes a tick box mm -hmm. exercise, which I think does nobody any justice really. That it's a matter of just having some black films or films that deal with black subjects. Or as Dami said, you know, now we're going to talk about race students. You know, that kind of very, very forced tick box and we've done it thing rather than it's, it's a holistic, multi-layered, embedding it in the culture um, uh, and making sure, you know, the danger then, of course, it, it gets buried amongst, amongst everything else. But mm. so I think it is about having a critical understanding of the world, of, of world history, of the place of everything. Um, we've got a long way to go, but yeah, um, I'm glad that you've, you've kind of, you, you picked that up and acknowledged that as a starting point anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Dami, did you want to say something more about, more broadly about de decolonizing the, the institution, the university? Um, I think the next big step would be definitely making the environment feel safer for students. Um, because I remember in my first year, um, my friends were part of the, you know, the, the attack of the, the black students that had eggs thrown at them from students from Northumbria? Yes, yes. Yeah, so my friends were involved in that and one of them actually left the university because he didn't feel like he'd gotten much support. Um, mm. Because even though it wasn't Newcastle students that, you know, were causing the issue, it was Newcastle students who were victims of it. And you know, it, it was very much one racist incident after another. And then you had the hockey team um, and their racial slurs. And we actually had a, a BAME attainment meeting with the heads of the student union uh, earlier this year, I believe it was. And they told us what had happened to them. So they, they'd like temporarily suspended the hockey team so they'd missed a few matches. And they said, oh, yeah, that would have been like, oh, yeah, I don't think it was, um, it, they, they, they didn't receive any kind of punishment. You know, they weren't allowed to go to any away games and they had to go on to like um, a course to learn about like why, why racism is bad. And while I was sitting there, I was, I was very much, it felt like a, a slap on the wrist almost because for them, it's just, you know, we've been temporarily suspended for like a couple months, with a couple months being Christmas time. So they weren't going to play anyway. and then they just go and do a course. But for students like me who have to watch that video when it comes up on people's stories or be there for your friends when they were just walking home and have people shout slurs at them and throw eggs at them, it's kind of like we are the ones that have to go through it and carry that weight on our shoulders. Mm. So I definitely think in terms of going forward, it's, as you said, it's definitely a process. This isn't something, you can't change an institution overnight, but you can change an institution over a period of time. But I definitely think the first step would be making the students safe because, you know, if you're paying, I'm, I'm, I was born here, so I'm, I'm only paying about 40 to 50,000 pounds. But then when you have international students who are paying yeah. bad amount of money, it, it's very much, why aren't they being kept safe like why isn't no one talked about where to go for mental health kind of things I had to go to my friends who are also black which is fine but if I'm at this university my safety should be a priority um so that is definitely you know saying we have people <clears throat> who are from similar ethnic origins as you they are trained to help you with these experiences and also making sure that the students who do these you know these terrible acts are properly dealt with because you can't say you have a zero tolerance to racism and then not treat the racist experience because then it just tells all the other students, we don't care. Um, and then it just, it continues. Um, and then I guess the next step after that is just even beyond the film degree, all the degrees, making sure that um, they are, you know, decolonized and say, look at themselves and be like, how much are, am I learning about myself and how much am I learning about other cultures? Um, so especially students in the medical who are learning like dentistry and stuff like that, there's a lot wrong with their curriculums as well. Um, history, especially. Um, I was in Central with my friend and we're working on a project and a guy who studies history at the university came up to me and he said that 
um, the reason why people from my country, I'm from Nigeria, have all these issues is because we're too reliant on the UK. And he started making reasons why slavery was a good thing. And I just remember having to text my friend underneath the table and be like, because she'd gone to the toilet. I was like, please come back. He's making me so uncomfortable. And even when they came back, he was still there just being like, I'm just sharing my opinion. And we asked him, where did you learn about this stuff? And he said, from history class. I'm like, the university is teaching you this. And apparently he has a bit of a reputation anyway, because he has, he tries to get a rise out of people. Um, but still, it's, it's very much like, if he's learning this from the curriculum and no one is doing anything and he's still a student, you know, that, that is, you know, terrible because it's, it's not just me, it's happening to, it's everything. So um, definitely, yeah, making sure the students are safe and making sure that this is an educational environment where people are being taught to learn more about the degrees and be better humans. Yeah, I think. Fantastic. Um, we've, we've got about five minutes before we, we need to, to wrap up. So I'm just going to move it on. But before I do, because this is such an important subject area, aspect of our discussion, I just wanted to see if there's anything else that you, that you wanted to add to what's been said before we kind of look more to, to the future. Um, is there anything else that you, you, you want to sort of add? Um, um Warren, do you want to go first? Because I think I talked a lot in the last one. No, no, you, you, you're you speaking facts in, in the last one, definitely. Um, but, I mean, just uh, just the story that you gave there about um, the Garden History Programme, um, it starts, it, you really start to question what are the university's motives? That people, people with these views um, are in a way, a pro are a product of the program. What is on that course? Does anybody know what's on that course? Um, and what, one thing, one thing I ask myself frequently is what is going on? What is going on? Um, doesn't make any sense. And this, um, people feeling unsafe, people feeling uncomfortable, um, the hockey team as well, which is one thing that um, we, we were doing at Stand Up To Racism. Um, it's, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a ways to go, but, um, we're on the way to go. If that, yeah, we're on that way. <laughs> Damien, do you want to come back on anything or elaborate on any points before we move on? Um, no, I think it would just be, yeah, nice to, to see the change that we've been talking about and hopefully, um, cause I actually don't know how, um, the curriculum itself is changed at the meetings you guys have to have and writing up all the new curriculum sheets. But um, I'd be happy to help out if, if anything, finding the documentaries to, to watch and stuff. Cause it's just, yeah, making sure that the next cohort, there's a lot of representation for them. I think. I mean, that's a very good point. We've, we've, because unlike schools, which have to work to a national curriculum and therefore they're kind of restricted in what they can teach at universities, actually, we can pretty much teach what we want, which makes it even more damning in some ways when you hear the stories about history, because that means we're choosing to, to teach history in particular ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but, but it gives us, we, we do have, I mean, that's, for me, that's a joy of university education. It kind of, ref, it, you know, get, we have that freedom and flexibility to, so long as it's of, you know, rigorous academic standards, you know, we, it's not just about climbing on hobby horses, but, you know, we have a fair amount of control over what we teach. So therefore, so we are going through a process at the moment of, of review. We've just started because we've just come out of the, the whole last year, really, of marking. And, and now we're beginning to look towards ne next year um, and reviewing our, our curriculum. And, and definitely we want student voice, we want your voice um, to, be, to be heard as we're kind of reshaping our, our curriculum. So we'll, 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 you know, we'll definitely get in touch and... Um, and take things forward in that way. Um, okay, so then just the final kind of set of questions really is around coming back to a bit about you as, you know, and, and how you see your career developing from here. You know, what, what are, I mean, it's, I'm going to keep the, the, the discussion focused on two things really. One, one is about how you see things developing for yourself as students, as, as potential filmmakers, but then how do you, how do you perceive the world out there to be in terms of some of the problems and barriers. 
So I guess that comes down to the fact, you know, what, what do you, what would you like to do after leaving university? How do you, where do you see yourself going afterwards? I mean, I know Warren, you're still in your first year, but it will fly past mate, And we know that it's going to go past really, really quickly, but you're entering into a world which is, you know, changing a lot. Um, but it's also an industry, the film industry. There was a report that came out a few days ago, um, which again re reaffirmed what we all kind of know. We've talked a bit, a bit about it, but there is kind of racism within the film industry that the opportunities for, particularly for black uh, people, especially for black women, are are, are much less, um, and the barriers are there. So I just wanted to get a sense of you know how you see your the next steps for you, and what you see, and whether how you perceive. The kind of the, the the prevalence of racism within within the industry and with, and how that was going to affect your journey. Um, so yeah, go on, Tammy, you go. For me, it's um, I definitely want to be creating more. Yeah, I, I know I keep saying this word, but just yeah, creating more black representation in all different types of ways. Um, whether that's through photographies, um, photography. I love interviewing people, so kind of that kind of interview style, talking to people. And then for documentaries, it would definitely be talking about the stories that the world doesn't really show, but always exist, you know? Um, talking about, like, cause I'm from Southeast London, talking about all the black kids who, who grew up there and what our experience is like, or talking about black people who have different, cause I think there's, um, especially when you watch TV today, um, fictional TV, it's very much just this one type of black person that they show and mm. that narrative is so important to show but at the same time you don't want people to be like this is the only way black people can be you want to share that narrative and all the other narratives so people know the black culture and the black narrative is multi-dimensional so we can we can be loud we can be um rightfully loud in that sense because we were always being silent you know we can be quiet also and shy and excited and also in terms of like clothing even um just we can wear whatever we want to wear and be ingrained in so many different communities like black and the lgbt community or black and mental health which meant black and mental health is very rarely ever talked about so i think yeah going on from post-graduation now until post-graduation and beyond that would be definitely analyzing um the black narrative and being like if that story exists and that person exists we're going to tell that story um but yeah that's it excellent it's exciting yeah and uh warren um yeah um, uh, yeah as you said i'm i'm looking to the future um probably trying to get like um internships at certain companies and um looking to to work to work um yeah yeah um, i that's the, the future isn't as certain, especially with the economy that um we'll be graduating into it's not going to be the best um but it's, it's more of a um yeah oh, I, I'm, I'm more of a person that sees where it goes so much yeah. more in the moment there's a battle to be won now let's win yeah. the, and then see what, the, what the terrain is like after that yeah pretty yeah well. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, but would you, I mean, broadly, it's maybe a silly question in some ways, because, but are you optimistic or pessimistic? Where would you put yourself, you know, about the future, given everything that's happened historically and the scale of, you know, what's facing us historically. And then of course there is this moment now. Um, would you say that you're optimistic or pessimistic or where would you place yourself for the future on that scale? Um. I mean, um, I would say I'm a, I'm a mix of both. I'm trying to remain as optimistic as possible um, because it's because I have a, a lot of anxiety about a lot of things um, that I can and can't control. So it's very much that you look at the statistics of people who are unemployed post out of uni and the kind of mental health that follows from that because you do this degree, you focus on just that and then getting a job in that specific field, whatever the degree is, is either extremely competitive or just, yeah, you want to find the ideal job for you. Mm. So I'm, I'm, there is a bit of worry in that, like, will I graduate and have no money and, you know, all that kind of thing. But also looking at the university's employment rate post-graduation, it does seem quite promising. So I'm trying to focus on that and also making sure 
what is that is in my control right now that I'm doing as much as I can so you know for mentoring um get trying to get other people to mentor me you know focusing in class and doing my own personal projects as well and just being like okay whatever happens at the university happens but also making sure that I'm in spaces that don't discriminate against me which is another big thing because it's like if racism didn't exist then it would just be a complete like level playing field but that's not the case so that is a worry at the back of your mind like I have all these stories to share but will these people not employ me because I'm too my existence is too political for them um and that's not something I'm very quiet about you know I'm if I'm gonna be there I'm gonna talk about it um but yeah it's kind of a mix between yeah both a mixed feeling just trying to do what I can and hoping that it works out in the end I think yeah. I think they call that being realistic as a kind of yeah um but what about you Warren what's your how would you respond to this question um I'd say I'd say I'm I'd say yeah, as you were saying, the scales, the scale of the problems are extremely large. Um, and but our capacity to deal with them is also growing ever larger. Um, so I'd say I've got I've got some optimism, uh, some a kind of optimism. But there's yeah, there's still quite a lot of pessimism because I st the scale because the scale of the problem really is that big. It really is quite wide and far reaching and deep um, and embedded in the social fabric. So mm. you, as, as Daniel was saying, you have to have a bit of both. Um, be realistic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's that it's, because it's so ingrained and so historically kind of rooted, it's sometimes almost impossible to imagine how it could be any other way. Mm. Um, and we and, and and because all of our energy and all of our resources are about resistance and fighting what is you know, the injustices that sometimes you know we kind of forget about how it could be and I think that's really really important that's why we need to look to the future and so and I think what Dami says you know imagine if there was no racism you know how would my life chances be affected and it's like the fact that we still have to say that is is you know is it, that's kind of very pessimistic but you know that that I think that leap of imagination is is a is a challenge that we all have to make, and I think we should do it because it it prompts us to think it doesn't have to be this way. So then it's a question of how do we make the change? What are the you know how do we make that change that we are ultimately it's a human society made by humans, so humans can change this society. Um, well, um, fortunately, I mean it's been fantastic talking to you both. I've really really enjoyed it, and you know kind of learned loads and I think hopefully this will be the start of a, of a conversation one thing you know um, I just want to leave you with there's, there's one of my favorite phrases is by Antonio Gramsci he's an Italian Marxist you know on this question of optimism and pessimism and in some ways he would say I reject the question this optimism pessimism thing and, and I think both of you kind of rejected by that by saying you know it's a question of being realistic understanding the opportunities and but understanding the challenges and that's how you you operate but he, Gramsci said something which I thought was really important and which I operate, operate by, which is this idea of, you know, it's about pessimism of the intellect, but optimism of the will. Pessimism mm -hmm. of the intellect, optimism of the will. So, you know, you, it, pessimism of the intellect because you know the scale of the problem. But optimism of the will is that you're going to give everything to, mm -hmm. make it, to make the change, both on the personal level, but also on a, on a social level. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, in a sense, that's what both of you are doing. You know this 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 kind of understanding that you have of the problems but also the engagement you know that both of you are actively engaged in all sorts of ways in being part of the the the, the solution to the problem and i think that's a challenge to us all is to join you and be part of the be part of the solution to to the problem and, and talking about it i think is obviously the, the the first step but it shouldn't be the end the end point it's the it's the step before the action um so I just want to, again, thank you both. It's been brilliant. And, you know, one thing I'm sure of is that you two are going to be inspirational figures for, um, for a whole generation of, of black kids that are going to be coming up and looking to make their way, you know, in, in, this, in, the, in the world of filmmaking, documentary filmmaking, photography or whatever. I'm, I'm, it's clear to me that you two are both really, really talented students that have got something to say and that you're going to say it, you know, and our job is to, is to help you say what you need 
to say. So thank you very, very much for taking the time. I uh, really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so Dami. much. Bye bye, Dami. Okay. Bye. bye.